Hello physical scientists and math learners, I'm Miss Martins and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a lesson. Tell me what topic you would like to see next. Enjoy the lesson. This is easy, basic grade 10 revision. So, I've given you a, c a circuit here, it's a series circuit. How do I know it's a series circuit? Because if I am current and I'm flowing like this, All the current has to flow through the 20 ohm, 30 ohm, and 10 ohm. All the current has to flow through all the resistors. So we know that it is series circuit. These resistors are in series. So determine the equivalent resistance. You just need to calculate the, resistan the resistance in series. So I'm going to do that quickly. So what I've done is I've said the total resistance or the equivalent resistance is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 because they are in series. 10 plus 30 plus 20 is 60 ohms that's it that is the equivalent resistance there's no there are no resistors in parallel so that's it easy then determine the reading on the voltmeter now the voltmeter is connected across the battery because the voltmeter is connected across the battery it's going to be reading the total potential difference essentially okay let me write your note Okay, so I called it the total potential difference. We also can call it the terminal potential difference once the switch is closed. Please remember that this is not the EMF. The EMF is the reading over the battery when the switch is open. Okay, but when we want to calculate the total potential difference or terminal potential difference, we need total resistance, which I just calculated. And we need total current. And we are given the value for the total current on the ammeter there, 0 0.3 amperes. We are going to calculate, this is A's answer, B, reading on the voltmeter, V is equal to I times R. I is the total current at 0 0.3. R is the total resistance at 60. So it's 0 0.3 times 60, which is 18, 18 volts. Okay, so there we go. There is your potential difference across the battery. So 18 volts, that is up here, 18 volts. Now, just as a note on series circuits, the current is the same throughout in a series circuit. So 0 0.3 amperes will flow through this entire circuit, but because these resistors are in series, they will split the voltage or potential difference. So resistors in series are potential difference or voltage dividers. What that means is, if I had to attach a voltmeter over there, another one over here, and another one over here, this 18 volts across the battery would split, okay, in accordance to these resistors. So how do I work out how they split? So let's call this V2, V3, V4. Let me show you how to determine. This is just a side note calculation. I'm going to determine the reading on V2. So V is equal to I times R. The current that will flow through V2 will be 0 0.3 amperes because the total current flows through all of them. And the resistance okay, over here is just 10 ohms. Why 10 ohms? Because this potential, this voltmeter is connected just across the 10 ohm resistor. So we go 0 0.3 times 10, which is 3 volts. So this voltmeter would measure 3 volts. V3, I'm just going to do all of them just so you can see. V is equal to times R. Again, the current will be 0 0.3. R in this case is 30. So 0 0.3 multiplied by 30 gives me 9, 9 volts. Okay, so this one is 9 volts. Then V4, you're working out V again, so it's V is equal to R times R. The current is 0 0.3, 0 0.3 um, amps will flow through there, times 20 ohms. 0 0.3 times 20 gives me 6 volts, so 6 volts volts. So you just take the current, 0 0.3, you multiply it by each resistance to get the voltage across that particular resistor. Now if you look, 3 volts plus 9 volts 
plus 6 volts will give me my 18 volts at the top. That's why we say resistors in series are potential difference or voltage dividers. So the 3 volts plus the 9 volts plus the 6 volts will give me 18 volts. Okay, let's look at a parallel circuit. Determine the equivalent resistance and then they want the reading on the ammeter. They give me the voltage reading across the battery. So let's start with equivalent resistance. These three resistors are in parallel. How do I know? Because current would come, all the current would flow through here and here. When it reaches this point over here, some of it will go that way, some of it will go that way. Then again, when it reaches this point, some of it will go that way, some of it will go that way. So basically what happens is some current will flow through the 20 ohms, some current will flow through the 30 ohms, and some current will flow through this bottom 20 ohms over here. So the current splits. So how do I determine equivalent resistance? It's 1 over RP, that formula. So let me just do it for you quickly. Okay, so 1 over RP is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. This is R1, that's R2, that's R3. I filled in over there, and now I've got into over 15, but that's 1 over RP. Remember, I don't want 1 over RP, I just want RP. So basically, I'm flipping that over, so I must flip this one over. So it's 15 over 2 ohms. You can write it in decimal form, which is 7.50 ohms. Okay, I'm just going to put that in brackets. So that is the equivalent resistance. Okay, so now we've got my resistance, my parallel resistance. And if you take a look, we just have three resistors in parallel. There's no other resistors here. So that is also my equivalent resistance. What that means is this one is 20 ohms, 30 ohms, 20 ohms. But effectively, it's like if there was one big fat resistor here instead of these three, it would be it would have a, a reading of 7.5 ohms. Okay, reading on the ammeter. So ammeter measures current. The ammeter is sitting up here. So remember, the current will come down. It'll split, 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 split. But once it reaches this point again, it'll measure the total current. So we are actually looking for total current. Total current. How do I find total current? I need my total potential difference, or I'm going to call it VT, total voltage, which what I mean by that is the vol volt voltage across the battery, which is 3 volts, and my equivalent or total resistance, which I just worked out, is 7.50. Now my formula for current I is equal to V divided by R. It is 3 divided by 7.5, and then we can calculate that. 3 divided by 7.5 is 0 0.4 amperes. Okay, that's your current. So that would be the reading over here. It would be 0 0.40 amperes. Now remember guys, that's the total current. When the current makes its way down here, it will split. So some of the 0 0.4 will go here, some will go here, some will go here. And it splits depending on the ratio of these resistors. Okay, so those are two relatively basic calculations. I'm going to go over... Sorry guys. In this circuit, we have 12 volts measured across the battery, the switch is closed, so this is not the EMF, it's terminal potential difference. Here we have R1, which is in series, R2 and R3, these are in parallel with one another. As we know, the current will come down, it'll split through these parallel resistors, will join again, and all the current will travel through R1 and back to the battery. Okay, so it says when the switch is closed, the voltmeter reading across the battery, is 12 volts, we know that. An ammeter reads a current of 2 amperes. So here, we've got an ammeter that measures a current of 2A. That's the total current. How do I know? Because this is this little ammeter is over here in the main branch. It's not sitting up here in one of these parallel branches. So this measures total current. It says here, calculate the reading on V2. Now, when we need to calculate the reading on V2, it's the voltage or the potential difference across R1. We need two things. We need, yeah, I drew it over here. We need current, which I have. I told you two amperes of current will flow through this resistor. 
the total current and we need resistance which is 4 ohms so you just put it in your formula and you'll get a voltage of 8 volts okay so just write it here this will measure 8 volts now remember the total voltage or the, the terminal potential is 12 volts 8 volts of the 12 volts will go to this resistor what that means is the remaining voltage so 12 minus 8 4 volts will go to the parallel combination so if I had to attach a voltmeter over here across the parallel resistors this voltmeter would measure 4 volts the 4 volts plus the 8 volts will give me the 12 volts so that's how it works then it says calculate the current in R2 and R3 now there's two ways to do this the one way is to use a ratio so we know the total current is 2 amperes so we can use a ratio to see how the current will split. The ratio of resistor 2 to resistor 3, it's a 3 to 6 ratio. So what I did here is I said the total current is 2A. This will split when reaching the parallel bra. And how will it split? It will split according to this ratio, R2 to R3, with 3 ohms to 6 ohms. I can simplify that to being 1 to 2. So then just as we divided something into a ratio in grade 8 and grade 9 that's what you guys are going to do now so how do I do that how do I split 2 amperes into this ratio well you add the parts of the ratio to give you a total which is 3 then you go 1 over 3 and 2 over 3 and you multiply these um, fractions by the total current so I color coded it for you to see so 1 over 3 and 2 2 over 3. Why over 3? Because it's, we're adding the part of the ratio. And why am I timesing or multiplying both of them by 2? Because that's the total current. So it's like getting a fraction of the total current. This fraction of the total current will flow through the one branch. This fraction of the total current will flow through the other branch. So we've got 2 over 3 and 4 over 3. Which one is bigger? 2 over 3 or 4 over 3? Obviously, 4 over 3 is a current, and what you need to remember is when we look at these resistors, the bigger current will go through the smaller resistor. I'm going to say that again. The bigger current will go through the smaller resistor. Why? Because obviously, more current will choose the easier path. Just think about you guys. I always use this um, kind of like analogy. Walking through the pathways, are you going to choose the pathway with less resistance or more resistance obviously you would choose less resistance so more currents can flow through the smaller resistor less resistance so smaller current will go through r3 the larger resistance and the larger current will go through the smaller resistor okay you may need to pause rewind rewatch that this is grade 10 work though okay here it says calculate the effective resistance of the parallel resistors. So I just want you to calculate the overall resistance for these two. They're in parallel, so we need to use the 1 over RP formula. It's 1 over 3 and 1 over 6, so we get 1 over 2. But remember, that's 1 over RP. I just want RP, so you flip the fraction. You get 2 ohms. So the effective resistance of the parallel resistors is 2 ohms. And then what is the total resistance of the circuit? Well, if this, these guys together give me 2 ohms, then it's 2 ohms plus the 4 ohm. Because the parallel resistors are technically in series with this resistor. So 2 ohms plus 4 ohms will give me 6 ohms. Then it says voltage across the parallel resistors. So... There's two ways to do this. We know that the voltage across R1 is 8 volts. We also know the total volt voltage is 12 volts. So if the total is 12 and this resistor takes up 8, it means that this voltmeter over here would take up 4 volts. Why? Because 4 plus 8 gives you 12. Remember the splits. So 12 volts is the total. 8 volts goes to R1 and 4 volts goes to the parallel ones. That's the one way to do it. The other way to do it is you can say, okay, the 
overall resistance of R1 and R2, because they're in parallel, the effective resistance over here is 2 ohms. I worked it out over here. 2 ohms. And the total current that will flow through the parallel resistors is 2 amperes. Because remember, even though the, the current splits, in total, in both branches, 2 amperes will flow. So some will flow up there, some will flow down here, through here. So we know the current is 2, the overall resistance is 2. So we go V is equal to I times R, 2 times 2, which is 4 volts. Okay. And yeah, I just said, notice how the voltage across R1 plus the voltage across the parallel resistors gives you the volt, volt, voltage reading across the battery, 12 volts. I also gave you another way to work out the volt, voltage reading across the battery if they didn't give it to you. You would need the total current and the total resistance. Total current is 2 amperes, total resistance is 6 ohms. So V is equal to I times R, it's 2 times 6, which will give me 12. Okay, so it all works. Okay, let's look at example 2. In example 2, I tell you that the voltmeter reading across the battery when the switch is closed is 30 volts. This is an ammeter connected in series here, so it'll measure the total current. This is R1. R2 and R3 and 4 in parallel and each of them have a voltmeter attached. Calculate the effective resistance of the circuit. So we have R3 and R4 in parallel. See, they're in parallel. And then we have this one's in parallel and then we have R2 and R1 connected in series. So you first need to work out the parallel resistance. So we've got 12 ohms and 4 ohms. So how do we do that? 1 over RP, so it's 1 over 12, 1 over 4. Please remember to write your formula first. We get 1 over 3. Remember, that's 1 over RP. I just want RP, so that's 3 ohms. So I, I wrote it over here for the grade 10s. The overall resistance for the parallel resistors is 3 ohms. We just calculated that. Then we go 3 plus 2 plus 3 because these are in series with one another. So 3 plus 2 plus 3 gives you 8 ohms in total. Next question says, calculate the reading on the ammeter. The ammeter is connected in series. Yeah, it's not in one of these weird branches, so it's measuring the total current. So I need total resistance, which I just worked out. 8 ohms comes from the previous question, and the total voltage is 30 volts. 30 volts. So you go I is equal to V divided by R, 30 divided by 8, so my current is 3.75 amperes. Now remember your unit. Question 3 says calculate the current flowing through R3. So the total current will flow through this branch, through R1, through R2, until it reaches this point over here where the current splits. So the question wants to know how much current goes through R3. So we can use ratios again. So the total current is 3.75. So 3.75 is going to split. Some of it's going to go here, some of it's going to go here. How it splits depends on the ratio of the resistors. So 12 ohms and 4 ohms. So what I did here is I said 12 ohms to 4 ohms. I simplified it. Sorry, excuse the coffee stain. It's 3 to 1. Okay, so 12 to 4, simplified it. It's simplifying it is 3 to 1. So I'm going to split the total current into that ratio. Then I don't care how you do ratios. I am showing you the way I teach my little maths babies in grade 8 to 9. So you add the parts of the ratio, then you go 3 over 4 and 1 over 4 and you multiply by the total current. You get 2.81 blah 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 and 0 0.9 blah blah blah. So this is a bigger current, this is a smaller current. Remember the smaller current will go through the larger resistor. So the question asked how much current goes through R3? R3 is a bigger resistor so the smaller current will go through the bigger resistor. So that is the current. Okay. Next question. Calculate the reading on V2. Okay, so V2, how do I do that? 
I have the resistance, 3 ohms, and I have the total current. Okay, I have the resistance, I have the total current, so to calculate the voltage, it's V is equal to I times R, there's the current, there's the resistance, and you get 11.25 volts. The next question was, calculate the reading on V3, so here, again, I have the current, it's the total current, I have the resistance, it's 2 ohms, so it's V is equal to I times R, current times resistance, and you get your potential difference or voltage there. Number six, calculate the reading on V4. That's over here. Now remember the, the, the resistance over here, the effective resistance is 3 ohms, and the total current, even though it splits, in total, the current going through here will be 3.75. So total current times effective resistance of the parallel will give you that voltage. Now just note, again, this voltage, 11.25, plus this voltage, 7.5, plus this voltage, 11.25. That, that, and that added together gives you 30 volts. Okay, this stuff should be making a little bit more sense at this point. The last two questions are theory questions. So what happens to the total resistance of the circuit if R3 breaks? So yeah, R3 is one of the ones in parallel. If this breaks... I know what you guys initially think. You think, oh, if that breaks, we're getting rid of a resistor. Surely resistance must decrease. But no, think about it. When R3 and R4 are in parallel, overall, this one's 12 ohms, this one's 4 ohms, but overall, their resistance is 3 ohms. If this one breaks, this no longer becomes an option. This branch no longer becomes an option. So all the current must go through R4 which means the resistance now for this section is 4 ohms, not 3 ohms anymore. So actually the resistance increases. And if this doesn't make sense to you, again, think about it like you're walking through the corridors at school. You usually have two options, two corridors to go through. So two options, two corridors, less resistance. Now this corridor is blocked off because they're busy building. So that means everyone has to go through this corridor. Resistance is going to increase. And just a side note, the question doesn't ask, but if resistance increases, current will decrease. And that's because of Ohm's law. If resistance increases, current will decrease. They like to ask that. Then it says, what will happen to the reading on V1, so the voltmeter across the battery, if the switch opens? Currently, the switch is closed and the reading is 30 volts. If this opens, the voltmeter across the battery is going to measure EMF, which means that the reading will be higher. Remember, EMF is higher, then you close the switch and the reading drops. So that's basically your answer. There's, there's the answers written out for you. And that's it for this grade 10 revision. You need to understand this before we move on to grade 11 stuff and into